Okay. Thank you. We are currently streaming live on Facebook and on YouTube. Chairman, you may begin the meeting. Chairman, um, you may begin. We can't hear you. Now. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you. Got to turn one thing on. All right. Good afternoon, everyone. Good, to good see afternoon. You um, welcome to the annual meeting of the Board of Commissioners of the Public Building Commission of Chicago, being held today, October first, twenty twenty, at uh, two thirty-five p.m. Uh, due to COVID nineteen, an in-person meeting is not prudent or practical. Today's meeting is being conducted via video conference and is being live streamed on the PBC's YouTube and Facebook accounts. You can access this information on the agency's website at pbcchicago.com. Director Sanchez, please call the roll. Thank you, Madam Chairman. Good afternoon, commissioners. It's great to see everyone here today. Thank you for participating in our virtual meeting. I just wanted to provide a reminder that as we begin our meeting to please keep your microphones muted when you are not speaking. However, please unmute your microphones right now as I call the roll. Chairman Lightfoot. I'm present. Commissioner Camargo. Here. Commissioner Ellis. Here. Commissioner Lavelle. Here. Commissioner Maldonado. Here. Commissioner Crackwinkle. Here. Commissioner Randolph. Here. Commissioner Sachs. Here. Commissioner Sotelo. Here. Commissioner Skaropoulos. Here. Commissioner Whitley. Here. Madam Chair, we have a quorum. Uh, thank you, Director Sanchez. Um, now we'll move to the public participation. Uh, pursuant, to sec pursuant to Section 2.06G on the Open Meetings Act, a public comment period will be held. Registered speakers will be allowed two minutes to provide comments. Director? Uh, Madam Chairman, there are no registered speakers today. All right, let's move on to the agenda. Um, consideration of approval of the minutes of the scheduled meeting held on September 10th, 2020. Is there a motion? So moved. Um, is there a second? Second, second? second by Commissioner Randall. All those in favor of approving the minutes of September 10th, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, say nay. The motion is approved. Um, next, nomination and election of the chairman and officers of the Public Building Commission of Chicago for terms ending September 30th, 2020. Uh, Commissioner Sachs, uh, do you have a motion? Uh, I have a motion and it's a high privilege for me to nominate as chairman, the mayor of the city of Chicago, Lori Lightfoot, <laughs> as secretary, Karina E. Sanchez, as treasurer, Arnold Randall, and as assistant treasurer, Tanya Fouché Weekly. It is my privilege to introduce the motion. Is there a um, second? Second. All in favor signify by saying aye. Uh, aye. Aye. Any opposed say nay. The motion is approved. Next we have the report by the Administrative Operations Committee regarding the meeting held on September 29th, 2020. Uh, uh, Committee uh, Chairman Maldonado. Yes. Commissioner. Is uh, Chairman or Commissioner Maldonado? In his place, I think it's Commissioner yeah. Randall. Madam Chairman, I can speak to it. Uh, this is Commissioner Randall. Thank you, sir. Please proceed. Um, the Administrative Operations uh, Committee met on September 29th of 2020, and our report is as follows. 
The executive director introduced a proposed 2021 PBC administrative budget and the Richard J. Daly Center operating and capital budget. The director of finance and gave detailed analysis of, of the budgets. The executive director will provide details during her budget presentation. The chief of staff reported on one task order award for specialty consulting services and the construction manager guaranteed maximum price or GMP report. Both reports are in the electronic documents under tabs A5A and A5B. The chief of staff also reported on the recommendation to appoint SMNG a dash a limited as the architect of record for the new belmont craig and replacement school and the re recommendation up for the approval of term extensions through december 31st 2022 for the pre-qualification of general contractors for licensed classification types a through e she also reported on a recommendation to approve amendments for web-based labor and minority compliance software to lcp tracker and b2g now in the amount of $212,000 and to RICO for copier services in the amount of $110,000, both for terms through December 31st, 2022. The amendment report is in the electronic documents under tab A5C. The Chief Development Officer reported on field orders and issued and provided a recommendation to approve deductive closeout change orders for six projects under tab A5D as follows. Change orders for liquidated damages assessed in the credit amount of $29,043.41 at the Door Elementary School project for unused allowances in the credit amount of $157,737.95 at the Taft Freshman Academy project. Change orders to deduct unused commission contingency in the credit amount of $25,470.48 at the Lincoln Park High School renovation project and for the Chicago Park District Facility Renovation Projects at Robichaux, Harrison, and Lincoln Park, respectively, in the credit amounts of $25,887.08, $9,059.98, and $36,167.90. The AO committee accepted the recommendations and reports from the PBC representatives. That concludes my report. Madam yes, Chairman, I move that we accept the report. Is there a second? Second. Um, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 You post say nay. Uh, the report is accepted. Next, we have the report of the audit committee meeting uh, held on September 16, 2020. Uh, committee Chairman Whitley. Thank you, Mayor. The audit committee held a virtual meeting on September the 16th, uh, 2020. Our report is as follows. The PBC's Director of Finance reported the anticipated submission of the PBC's comprehensive annual financial report in conjunction with the commission's basic financial statements for the years ending December 31st, 2019 and 2018. The PBC's assets exceeded liabilities by $72.5 million on December 31st, 2019. Of this amount, 49.5 million was included in net investment in capital assets and 22.3 million was restricted for the for use by the daily center and for commission operations the PPC, pbc's total uh, net position increased by 1.3 million for the year ending december 31st 2019 due to decreases in project revenues that directly impact the commission's administrative fee. Representatives from Deloitte provided uh, the required auditor communications related to the PBC's audited financial statements for the year ending uh, December 31st, 2019. Of note, there were no audit adjustments uh, recorded or unrecorded. Deloitte further reported that there were no material weaknesses or significant uh, deficiencies in the internal controls over financial reporting. Finally, we commended the PBC's finance team, and we certainly do, and their partners at Deloitte for their professionalism and commitment to excellence in completing this audit while in a, a remote setting due to the current situation. The audit committee accepted the reports 
And that concludes my report at this time. Thank you, Chairman Ridley. Is there a motion? I move, this is Chairman Sachs. I move and I wholeheartedly like to congratulate everybody having been on the committee, myself, the work was outstanding Absolutely. and the reward is. Thank you, and, I, and I thank our chairman. Thank you, sir. Sec second, Commissioner Randall. There's a motion and a second. All those in favor of accepting the report of the audit, uh, audit committee signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed say nay? The uh, report is accepted. Thank Next you, on the agenda, consideration of approval of a term extension for the pre-qualification of general contractors for license classification types A through E. Um, Director Sanchez will provide a report. Thank you, Madam Chairman. In an effort to accept capacity building within the local general contracting community, the PBC board approved the pre-qualification of 63 firms, including 18 minority or women business enterprise firms for license classification types A through E. Today, we are requesting approval to extend the terms of these pre-qualifications through December 31, 2022, to continue to facilitate opportunities within the local general contracting community. The full list of recommended firms, along with their corresponding class, can be found in the electronic link. That concludes my report for A7. Madam Chairman, I move, we ex I move the, the A7. Uh, is there a second? Ms. Commissioner Randall, I second. Um, all those in favor of uh, approving the uh, term extension for uh, these uh, particular classifications of general contractors signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed say nay. The motion is approved. Um, next on the agenda, a report by the executive director regarding regular reports, development status, and other matters. I am pleased to report that the PBC successfully submitted our 2019 and 2018 Comprehensive Annual Financial Report, also known as a CAFR, to the Government Finance Association of the United States and Canada. We are hoping that for the 10th year, the PBC will be awarded a Certificate of Achievement for Excellence in Financial Reporting. This is the highest form of recognition for excellence in state and local government financing reporting. In order to be awarded a Certificate of Achievement, a government unit must publish a easily readable and efficiently organized CAFR. The CAFR must satisfy both generally accepted accounting principles and applicable legal requirements. We believe that our current CAFR continues to conform to the Certificate of Achievement program's requirements and we are submitting it to the GFOA to determine its eligibility for another certificate. We want to thank Deloitte with support from Washington, Fitman, and McKeever, a minority-owned certified public accounting firm, and Velma Butler Associates, a woman-owned certified public accounting firm, for their assistance. Finally, this CAFR could not, not have been prepared without the tremendous leadership of our Board of Commissioners, and certainly not without the dedicated help of the entire staff of the PBC. I extend my appreciation to the team for their hard work on this report. Also, I would like to share with you our third quarterly external newsletter, Constructive News You Can Use. I briefly mentioned at our last board meeting that we delivered 11 high quality public facilities for our Chicago Public School clients. The newsletter features details on the completed 11 CPS projects, including three high school renovation projects on Chicago South Side, an elementary school renovation project, and the construction of seven annexes, along with relevant renovation work. Finally, I want to send a virtual congratulations to Carl Lejeune, PDC's Deputy Director of Planning and Design. Her, Carl has run 19, 19 Chicago marathons, 12 as a pacer, and was recently featured on the news for his motivation and coaching runners. His constant drive is an inspiration to all of us at the PDC. That completes my report. Is there a motion to accept the report of the Executive Director? Madam Chairman, I move that we accept the report. This is Commissioner Randall, I second. Um, all those in favor of accepting the report signify by saying aye. 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 All those in opposed say nay. Other report is accepted. Next item on the agenda, consideration um, of approval of the PBC Commission's 2021 administrative budget. Director Sanchez. Thank you. 
Today, we will present two budgets, the proposed 2021 PVC administrative budget and the proposed 2021 daily center operating and capital budget. The daily center budget will be discussed during my V1 report. You will find both budgets in the electronic link. First, I will discuss the 2021 PVC administrative budget. As previously, as previously reported, the PVC is at a critical financial crossroads. The bond revenue that helped to defray PVC administrative costs in the past is no longer available. The PVC's main source of revenue is now generated through project administrative fees from the construction, of, construction budget of work in place, also known as the WIP. When I became executive director in 2017, the PVC was suffering from a stru structural deficit with a gap between budget expenses and current and projected work in place. My goal was not only to reorganize the PVC so it was operating in a manner where our resources were higher than our projected expenses, but to also establish a reserve for the organization and identify cost savings and efficiencies to realign our organizational structure so we could leave, live within our needs. We have done that. However, our, cur our current projections have our expenses exceeding our resources by $1.8 million for the 2021 budget. In addition, based on the current work in place, the surplus generated over the past few years will be used to offset the deficiencies of the 2021 budgeted, budgeted expenses. Without further work announced between the remaining of 2020 and mid-2021, PVC will have exhausted all of its surplus. As you are aware, the PDC is a non-taxing body and we rely on projects assigned to us from the city and sister agencies to generate revenue. Our current work in place stems from projects in the later stages of construction and or which were undertaken in 2018 or 2019. To date, based on the sister agencies announced capital improvement plans, only three new projects have been assigned to the PDC in 2020 for a total of $47.7 million resulting in a drastic decrease in our work in place for 2021. But not, unlike many agencies, our largest expense is personnel. Personnel costs make up two-thirds of our administrative budget. Payroll expenses continue to be PVC's largest administrative budget driver. With few revenue-generating options and a shrinking project pipeline, it is clear that a further reduction in force to an already streamlined staff is required. But that being said, the proposed 2021 administrative budget of $8,497,272 reflects a decrease of $1.1 million or 11% from the 2020 budget. Personnel expenses have been reduced by 15% or $862,191 with the total personnel services being $4,996,206. However, there are some positive news. The largest areas of increase for the 2021 budget are the daily center's rent and leasehold improvements, which will be discussed in more detail during my next report. In addition, we continue to experience a favorable variance in legal fees, and as a result, have reduced this budgeted area by 22%. The PVC has also reduced the computer and equipment budget by 12% after successfully launching eBuilder, our new cost control system. This new construction project management software solution supports collaboration and provides visibility for all of our PVC stakeholders. As a non-taxing body that generates its own revenue, the PVC continues to take the tough and necessary steps toward fiscal responsibility. The PVC understands the importance and the responsibility that comes from being entrusted with public resources. For this reason, we have the highest level of, of accountability and transparency in managing and reporting how we spend taxpayer-supported dollars. PVC contracts include goals and requirements intended to promote a diverse local workforce and business opportunities for MBE, WBE firms in its delivery of construction and professional services, while supporting the use of minority and female journey workers, apprentices, and laborers. But the PVC's main generated through project administrative fees from the construction budget of work in place, I look forward to working with the members of this board to help identify additional projects for 2021 and beyond. The PDC is planning for the long term and will remain committed to a sound and balanced budget that is focused on the priorities set by this board of commissioners and effectively deliver high quality facilities on behalf of our clients. That concludes my report for A9. Madam Chairman, Commissioner Sachs moves. We accept the report. Sir, and, sir. Approve, and approve the budget. This is Commissioner sir, Randall. 
I'm oh, sorry. Uh, does Commissioner Randall, I second that motion. All those in favor of accepting uh, the report and approving the budget signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed say nay. The motion is approved and the budget is approved. Uh, next item on the agenda concerns the Richard J. Daly Center. Consideration of approval of the proposed Richard J. Daly Center 2020 operating and capital budget. Uh, Director Sanchez. Thank you. MB Real Estate, the property manager for the Richard J. Daly Center, develops an annual budget to cover the operating and maintenance costs for the building, as well as a budget for capital projects which support maintaining and upgrading the 55-year-old facility. The Daly Center's total 2021 operating budget is $18,962,467, which is a 14.71% increase over the 2020 budget. Additional services associated with COVID-19 pandemic screening and mitigation have contributed to the increase in the building's operating budget. We are working closely with our building manager, the city, county, and state on protocols to ensure a safe environment to individuals visiting the Richard J. Daly Center. A portion of the operating budget increase is also related to the annual increases in union cleaning, security, and engineering wages. The overall goals for 2021 are to continue to ensure the security and health safety of all of the building occupants, pursue renewable energy measures, bolster building emergency preparedness, and complete construction for new incoming building tenants. The capital budget includes $2,880,000 for capital projects, including draining repairs, revolving door retrofits, lightning retrofits, and upgrades to the building's life safety systems. The 2021 capital improvement plan is $2.6 million lower than the improvements budgeted for 2020. The projected decrease in capital projects offsets the increase in operating expenses, creating a minimal increase in operating and capital expenses of 0.60%. Together, the 2021 PVC administrative and daily center budgets affirm our commitment to look to the future of the PVC by dedicating ourselves to prudent budgeting while striving to reach our goal to ensure everyone's safety and health. I want to give special thanks to the PVC finance team led by Ms. Tanya Fouché Weekly for their hard work in compiling the proposed 2021 budgets. That concludes my report. Is there a motion? I move it. Mr. Commissioner Mr. Randall, I second it. Um, all those in favor of um, approving uh, the proposed uh, Richard J. Daly Center 2021 operating budget and report signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed say nay. Uh, the uh, report is accepted and the motion on the budget is also approved. Next move into the Board of Education. Consideration of approval of the appointment of a firm to provide architect of record services for the new Belmont Craigan Replacement School Project. Director Sanchez. Thank you. The PDC consulted its Architect Letters of Interest and Qualifications database to identify a firm that demonstrates excellence in design execution, coupled with relevant experience, creativity, and innovation. After careful consideration, evaluation of relevant experience, including serving as a design architect for the project and in consultation with our client, we recommend the appointment of SMNGA as the architect of record for the new Belmont Craigan School. The firm has demonstrated recent experience with school projects, successful execution of projects with aggressive schedules, and commitment to maximizing participation of MBE and WBE utilization. That concludes my report for C1. Is there a motion? Madam, Chair Madam Chairman, Commissioner Sachs moves. I is there a second? This is Commissioner Randall, I second. All those in favor of approving the report signify by saying aye. Uh, aye. 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 Opposed say nay. Uh, the report is accepted and the motion is approved. Um, last item on the agenda, I believe, is um, uh, relates to the City of Chicago. Consideration of approval of a form formulation request from the City of Chicago for phase one of the Joint Public Safety Training Campus located at 4301 West Chicago um, Avenue, Commissioner Sanchez. The PBC is excited to continue its partnership with the city on this formulation request and the amount not to exceed $250,000 to oversee a feasibility study associated with the out outlawed area at the Joint Public Safety Training Campus. 
We will coordinate these efforts with the Department of Assets, Information and Systems and the Department of Planning and Development and the Chicago Police and Fire Departments. That concludes my report for D1. Is there a motion? Commissioner Sachs moves O1, D1. Commissioner Randall seconds. Um, all those in favor of uh, approving the um, report signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed to nay. Wish to be recorded as voting now on this item. This is Tony Preckwinkle. So reflected. Uh, the motion is approved. Is there a motion to adjourn? Yes. I, I, Commissioner Sachs makes the motion, wishing everybody safe and really thanking everybody for their leadership, the mayor and the president of the county board and all the other commissioners. This is an... an um, is there a second on the motion? To Commission, Commissioner Randall seconds. Um, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed say nay. Thank you, everyone. The meeting is adjourned. Appreciate Thank the you. work of staff and all the commissioners. Thank, Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Have a good afternoon, all. Good all evening. Right. Good afternoon. Stay well and happy.